Old Coon Dog was a buck just old enough and big enough that he considered himself boss of these parts. And when I put out waste corn at a trail camera site, he naturally laid claim to the food. He'd share when there was plenty, but if supplies ran low, everything knew to give him first dibs. That is, everything except those pesky raccoons, sometimes as many as 26 that hit the chow each night, and they could put that corn away. Other deer pretty much tried to get along, but not coon dog. He always had an attitude, and he didn't like any challenge to his authority. He'd strut around even when no one was there. And you could see it was best not to mess with him. He'd mark the corn pile as his own territory, pawing out a bare spot in the dirt and then peeing across his hawk glands to leave his own special scent. If he joined a party, you'd better make room. A month back, before the rut or deer mating season was close, he was gentler in his warnings. He'd make eye contact with his smaller rivals, stepping forward as a reminder he was 15 times their size. But as November approached and his fighting urges grew, he upped the ante. He'd threaten a powerful kick that could land like a hammer blow. And the raccoons wisely moved away. But those antlers on Coon Dog's head weren't just decorations, and finally he got serious about teaching indifferent coons a lesson. Ouch! This was more serious than it looked, since sharp antler tips were easily capable of opening deep wounds. In fact, rival bucks could be killed by such weapons in a serious fight. Some of these food skirmishes no doubt led to injuries, especially when a raccoon was hit hard enough to roll it across the ground. At the end, the smart ones knew to stay out of harm's way. And lately, the raccoons create a polite space when Coon Dog comes to dine. I'm Mike Blair in the Kansas Outdoors.